Demonic. Hitting you with this random stream, not even uh, didn't even plan for this stream. Two thirty K stream. Well, that was a while ago, but yeah, that was an epic. Won't be doing that for a while again. How was everyone anyway? How's things? Thank you very much, Viking Legend. I changed my notification. Um, I didn't. I didn't plan to do this this morning, so um, that's probably why nobody had it. Like I didn't set this up as a live stream, um, so that's probably why no, none of you got notified. Or rather, none of you got notified that I was going live until I actually went live. Um, so I'm. I'm seeing that which which ones of you actually. Um, I clicked the notification button because that's probably why you got notified. When I finally did go live. Today was going to be like a see how I feel day. Um, and how I woke up this morning. Rather than. Uh, rather than anything else, so that's why I didn't plan for anything, just in case I wasn't going to do anything, <laughs> quite simply. the uh, screen's not center. Actually, let's see what it looks like.
Perfect. Perfecto. I actually really like this route, I'm not gonna lie. This is the PRL half loop. So you do the um, you do the half. I don't think I've ever been up Fox Hill this many times in an event, in any one event. I can see there's some quite cool riders here as well for a Saturday morning. So I wasn't really expecting that either. We've got Mike coming, ex teammate at GLT Condo. He's racing. It's quite a fair, well, it's a fairly big field, I'd say. 100 odd, 150 odd riders. Only a hundred in at a minute, but new kit, Josh, new kit. What is it? It's uh the distance of this I think is sixty eight kilometers. Oh, excuse me. I think it's 68k. I'm not entirely sure. Um, find out now in four and a half minutes. Love a bargain. <laughs> Love a bargain. Sixty nine, there we go. Now see if if we went for the sixty eight I would have come up a clog the shot. I think we'll have some music for this one. Might be a little bit long. Well, hour and a half, maybe. There's power up to this race, I'm guessing there is. Guessing there is. What's the level for today? I'm going to grab my Bluetooth off.
Oh, Kurt Tomorrow's giant, Lizzie. <laughs> Should be a nice start to a Saturday then. <laughs> Lego. I can see, I can see a canyon rider. Who is that? Reese Howells. Got it.
hold the wheel. This is not good positioning. I can't get to the front. Well, can you put something under the back of the turbo? Yeah. That magazine. That magazine. Why is it jumping around? It's just jumping.
Hi Scott. Yeah, what's up with that turbo, Niels? Like, why why is it saying the in the rules that you can't use that? Forgive me, I'm a, I'm a noob. This bike is the, uh, it's the Madone, I think. Yeah, pretty sure it is the Madone. Cheers Phil, have a good one yourself. Gray is all one.
of a pretzel. Yeah, we could do that. If I feel okay. I feel okay, Johnny. Um, quick assessment. I mean, in terms of perceived effort, that first lap was fairly steady, moderate, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had a rest day yesterday, so fresher coming into this, and therefore likely to ride myself into it. So the last last rep will be the decider obviously and that's when I'll I'll be able to have an accurate representation of how I feel coming into that one. No worries, though. I do remember what happened in the last one. We went with 15k to go. We'll do sub four tomorrow, Phil. I reckon we can. Sub four. Get a little group of us. Some good sheltering. I reckon we'll do a sub four. Yeah, type hype in the chat if you want to hear, see me go 15k solo at the end. Actually, no, don't type hype, type ed mode. I can type both. <laughs> Sorry guys. This is a much better size group after uh, I hate big groups, oh, it's far too stressful, I'm going to deal with people not holding the wheel, you can't rely on people, that's a quarter of the day, you can't rely on people. Cheers, Tom. <laughs> I do, Johnny. I do. Yeah.
By the way, I have lowered my um, training difficulty just a little bit. I'm playing around with it a little bit actually. I'm trying to see how it affects my legs on back to back days. So today we've got it on like 55, 50. Uh, yesterday we actually had it on 100. Oh, not yesterday, sorry. Thursday. For the race, the triathlon race. We're actually on 100. So if you want to jump to that video and have a look at it, you'll actually be able to see the difference. For a pure climb, um, I got it on like 60 because I still want to feel little gradient changes but I don't want it to be like, uh, like that type of thing and that's tend to, that kind of tends to what happened whenever I've done like the out. I've ridden the out for like 300 watts with like 90% mm, training difficulty and it's like it's like, well, this is, this is hard for... I do find 100 is too much, yeah. I almost feel like if we were, I'd say 80 feels like the real road. That's what I feel like. That's just my personal preference, but, you know. I agree with you, vegan. I'm not too much of a fan of this now. Like this kit, this, um, this selection that I made today, I'm not a fan of it. Like 50, it's, it reminds me now why I don't like it. My cadence is a bit lower. I think you stop. If you try and change your mid-game, you stop. Because it's just set things. Oh, you can. Cheers. Hi Tom, bad time. <laughs>
made a video about Aliam. You have to look back. Not how long ago. A week. It's recovery. I'm a stage racer, naturally. Endurance rider. The more I do, the better I become. To a certain point. That's after eight years of trial and error. No, Ethan, that doesn't work here. <laughs> Only hashtag head mode works here. Same here, Steve. Amazing how quick we're going. We come over the top there and it's just bang! We're on it, Ian. We're on it, we're on it. Morning, everyone, it's just joined. Morning. Trying to get some recovery down here. Ah, I'll, leave, I'll leave the train if you'll be, don't worry about it. I'll leave it. We almost got to 100 beats a minute then. <laughs> we do, Nils, we do. Man, heart rate recovery is on point today. <laughs> Unbelievable. He likes to come up quick though, so it's not completely amazing. He likes to come up quick.
bit of perspective. Um, I'd be interested to see what my max heart rate is to be. I mean, we've got up to 166. And that felt reasonably uncomfortable, but not really bad. Yeah, those are the ones doing. Those are the ones. What I do find is easier is when you're training difficult to set lower, you can draft easier, I think, or at least it makes it easier to monitor your walk the kilo. Morning Paul, you haven't missed a lot to be fair, um, we've got four reps of Box Hill, we've done two now, so we're just coming through start finish, we're going to do one more, which will be the penultimate, and then the last one I'm guessing, <laughs> well I don't know to be honest, it's likely to be hard this time up, to soften people. I'd imagine, and then the last time I, I think every man for himself, but ideally I'd like to be in a group of about uh, 5 to 10, coming over the top of the last one. I don't think going solo is possible, unless of course, you know, people are on bad days, <laughs> but um. I think it's, it's a no-brainer to go hard the last time up, especially for us, because it's always a case of how, um, how tired can we make people before the finish and the sprint. That's the main, uh, that's the main thing, you know. See what happens out this time. Thanks, that guys. Oh, that's a little bit easier on the cadence. Yeah, you're right, Steve. Yeah, box hill is quite easy. Big ring, no problem. It's a very fast climb. Morning, Johan. How you doing, sir? Ah, nice one. The over under session. I see some people have been giving it a go recently and tagging me on Instagram. It's really good at serving a purpose.
Oh, this is going quite easy now. Definitely helps with zip racing, dude, definitely. It's, well, it helps with all forms of racing because it's that elevated effort, micro burst. Like me, you know, this is quite rolling, so I'm having to ride a bit, ease off, ride a bit, ease off. So it translates over very well. I always ride three second average I'm new. Um, on Zwift and on my head unit. Um, it's just smoother. Just allows you to control your effort easier. You gotta you gotta think about that sometimes, as well as this. So you know you, you're using the power to measure your legs, but like your head, you don't want to be going like oh, power dropping, power spiking, power dropping. Power. You want to actually have a little bit of smoothness. So now I've not had a go to Phil Ferrari yet, no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Found a fair bit of recovery here now. You guys noticing? <laughs> yes, Lord. I do actually do that. No comment. <laughs> Ooh. Bring it out. Nice one, Rich. Nice one. I like the sound of that. What wheels are on? We're on the end of these. That's the one. Anyway, it's 3.4, I think. I had uh, plenty of drops to spend. <laughs> There's Westminster. All left, right there. Okay, top of this climb next time. Top of this climb now. I got myself a bar. Um, it was in a video not so long ago, Robbie, called like my three best hill climbing efforts. Uh, uh, three best hill climbing sessions. Uh, I'm not using the lightweights because they're more for pure hill climbing on drift, aren't they? Oh, the glibby is awful. Alright, full focus now. Good kick off up here. Okay, we're nearer the front this time. It's a bit better. Cheers, Troy. Thank you. Okay. 
in the front. About time. Who wants to go? Yes, four cents, yes. Does it say the description in the title? It's a good thing to do that. <laughs>
this group. Still fairly big. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried actually, that mileage doesn't look right, like, 50k to go, that doesn't seem right, maybe it is, I don't know. The chest one stops working with the sweat, that's why, and it feels uncomfortable. Can't see. Stay in the wheel, stay in the wheel, stay in the wheel, hold it, yeah that's better, man you got to have some faith in this, jeez, got balls of steel. I've done a few Zwift TTs. There's one today that I was looking at, at like one o'clock, two o'clock, it's like 25k or something. So our rate's going from 165, 170 to 105 in about two minutes, maybe even less. Yeah, I did that one a while ago. Like a few months ago, the one year. Really like it. The Zwift Tamil Tom Charles on like Tempest Fuji. They're really good if you want to do, you know, a 20 minute full gas test. Well, they are for me because it takes me 21 minutes, but <laughs> I imagine for a lot of people it takes about 25, 26, but still, you can get a lot out of them, you know, there's a lot of motivation there, just like you'd have in real life.
Who's saying lord? Where's that been mentioned? Where's that been mentioned? Well, it's no competition though, is it? He's at altitude, he's got the fact. <laughs> I'm at like 25 meters and I've got like one of the best fans in the game. Not in the game, in the game that is life. <laughs> what is those saying? I haven't seen it. What's those been saying about um like why Zwift TTs aren't like real life? Is it just because of aerodynamics? Because like what's per kilo, or like, I'm probably fitter than Alex does here. That's not beef. That's not beef, I'm not calling it out nothing. Just saying, he's very knowledgeable, very dynamic, knows how to pace himself. Very strong, still very strong. But that's the difference between, you know, Zwift time trial and in real life time trial. It's really like, Because that's how aerodynamics work. <laughs> I've done numerous time trials, like club time trials, where I've done like 6.4, 6.5, 6.6 watts per kilo for 20 minutes for a 10 mile time trial on a road bike. I've done 20 minutes and then I've beaten a guy, you know, I've done 380 watts. I've beaten a guy who's done 300 watts by 10 seconds and he's got like 10 grand worth of equipment, I'd put up 80 watts more than him and beat him by 10 seconds in a 10 more time trial. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's nuts. That's what's nuts. When you see when you see people racing. Yeah, but on Zwift. You've got different equipment, which makes you faster. You've got different equipment, which makes you faster on Zwift, just like in real life. So if you're all on the same equipment on Zwift, at all the same weight and all the same height, it would come down to what the kilo. He probably did on his Tron all bit. He loves the Tron. <sighs> so what's his, um, what's his beef with it? What's his actual beef in one line? If you could sum it up in one line, what's Alex's beef? I know it's not real beef, because he's, you know, he understands what it is, uh, it's a game and uh, it's not real life, but... This is all blowing my mind now. He doesn't have an issue. Oh, there you are, Sam. <laughs> Hello, Robbie Jr. I mean, I don't win at every hilly race in the game. Because it comes down to tactics, it comes down to, you know, power-ups, it comes down to other things, doesn't it? So, it's all part of it. It's all part of the process.
every TT I've done on Zwift I've won. <laughs> but that just that just tells you why, you know, you know why. I'd be interested to see, you guys know Conor Dunn, don't you? The world's tallest ex-pro cyclist. Conor can do, like Wiggins' is hour record power. Conor can do like 440 watts for an hour. He's huge. He's also, like, quite lean. He is very lean. Um, I'd be interested to see how he'd do on Zwift, actually. By the way, can I say, I love the fact that we're having a conversation with 20k to go in a race that has a potential massive climb from now that could decide the whole outcome of this 30 man group. And we're just having a chat about physics. <laughs> the game. <laughs> My word, we're going to be done in like an hour and a half. How nuts is that? Ah, <laughs> body John. Sally says morning as well. <laughs> yeah. It's not always like this. I don't always get the chance to talk. I've got to be honest. Yep, last time of the climb, coming up. So here we go. Excited. Excited. This is going to be half of the ball, no doubt. It's got to be in it. Somebody's going to go. Well, it's a dog. I'm going to go. <laughs> it's got to be hard in the bottom. Climb's not long enough. I'm not going to be able to do a cheeky little breakaway at the end. We'll see. If this group still gets over, it's still a fairly big group. I know there's some riders in here that don't have very good 5 minute power. Well, they do, but what's it like after an hour and 10 minutes? It's a question. Cheers, John. <laughs> we'll give it a good crack. It's all I can promise you all. See what the max heart rate is going to be. It's up 20. There we go. Move it up. Oh, this is handy.
Zach, I've just seen your message by the way. <laughs> From my phone. Nicky, Nicky's got a big kick on him. David. Sorry, Zach. It's your own fault. <laughs> I wasn't going to drop as much on that one, guys. Smaller groups, so I have to be a bit more focused. Twelve k. Small group. Eight. That's quite good. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, 
Sprint. Sprint mode. Someone's definitely going to go though. Someone's definitely going to try it. Raining now. Ball trailer. I seem to catch these guys up. In the wheels. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cover these. I think I'm not gonna try and go myself because we're on terrain now that doesn't suit me. So <clears throat> not because of my weight, because of my raw power. So if it was a hard bit of road, this I may be able to sneak away, but because it's such a fast road, I don't have that kind of. Um, like punch to get a gap. So we're gonna play it by ear now. We're gonna mark people. You guys keep an eye for me as well on this group and let me know. Say now, for example, if somebody goes up the road and he's a danger man, shout it. Because I could just shut it down. Hopefully. <laughs> so, the escalator, you reckon, is likely to pop people. This is like a proper race out guys, you know what I mean? These are the races you want to see, like small groups like this. That are like, you know, they're thinking about the finish. Who's going to go, you know, is it going to be a sprint between the eight of us? Some are going to go early, some are going to go long. These are the finishes we want to see. Now these are the finishes that like me as a rider, I love the suspense. We have to be careful because that group behind is 40 seconds. And it's working hard. This is going to get spicy up here, no doubt. Yeah.
You'll slide off a train of block. Ah. Cheers, Nails. Good luck yourself. Okay, I'm back on. <laughs> back on the train of block. Thank you for the head mode support. I felt good then when we punched to get across. I felt good. The red is like proper rich red. Someone's going, no. Five K. I'm thinking of going for the sprint actually. Give myself some motivation to sprint against some strong ape riders. Don't really get a chance to. That's what I'm thinking. Nah, let's do it. I think we turn around here now, bud. Turn around with the roundabout. Alright, cheers Keith. I'll keep an eye open there. I'll just go as hard as I can. And there's no uh, there's no second guesses then. weird I guess people are going to keep pressing all over the top of this guaranteed or maybe not
I am. Following everything. <laughs> Nah, they'll easily have me over the kilometre. Nah, they'll easily have me over the kilometre. Because if I go with the kilometre go, I've got to go all in. And unfortunately, I don't have the raw power to go with one minute left. They all beat me over a minute. Oh, the sprint is on the boulevard. Somebody's going to go on there. I thought it was the other play. I thought it was a different pace. <laughs> it's amazing how pathetic my sprint is at the end of a hard effort. It's amazing. It's like you've got to punch, recover, and punch again. And that's not something I do. <laughs> I thought it was going to be, you know where the start was? I thought it was that finish. And then I remembered when I saw a K to go, I was like, we're not going to get there in a K. So we must be finishing on the, on the red carpet. Um, but it's funny how those efforts, like, those efforts are just like brutal, you know? So look at the graph. Graph, 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 graph. Graph. Um, yeah, those efforts are just brutal. It was a good find with power, but we didn't go all, all in on the climb. It was a long way to go from the top, wasn't it? I must have been to finish that, that one minute there. I mean, we went, we responded. You know, we responded. So when when it when that guy again went with uh, eight hundred meters to go or seven hundred meters to go, like we responded, and we were able to close the gap just. But you know that that was pretty much me going all in for like. You know the last 700, 800 meters. Like the uh, the actual effort it would have taken for me to like this is the thing. Isn't it? Like everybody's different, and that's why. Like for me, like yes, my heart rate recovery is brilliant. As you can see, like it, it drops off really quickly, like off those big efforts. But like when it comes to doing like a short sharp effort or a sprint, I don't have that. Um, it's very rare that you get a rider that can do both. Um, every rider has a weakness, you know, pros possibly haven't seen a weakness, but every rider does have a weakness. And that's why I like streaming every race, because 
if you see my weakness, then uh, then like I hold myself accountable to it. So um, it's like for me to do like respond to that attack and then to try and sprint, like do a maximal sprint. I can't do that. And the easiest way to explain that sort of race finish dynamic to you is to think of it like think of it like um, think of it like your your ceiling. You know like how I talk about how I talk about you have like your FTP. So if your FTP here and it's kind of like filling up this fish tank. And the fish tank's like this, and your FTP is like kind of halfway, like a line halfway down that fish tank. So every time you do an effort over FTP, you're kind of digging yourself into a hole. Then you recover, or you give yourself a chance to recover during a race, and you recover back up, and you almost refill that back or refill that fish tank. So when, when you do longer effort, obviously some people suit the longer efforts, they can recover faster from them. When you do the shorter efforts, you dig yourself in a huge hole, and then the riders who are more accustomed to it can recover from those shorter efforts faster. Um, when it comes to like these maximal sprint efforts, if you think about, say, you know, coming into the finish there now, and say the winner did a 15 second power of 1000 watts in that last sprint, in that last 15 seconds. Um, yeah, Keith, sometimes it's genetics, mate. It's just genetics. But when you think about, so when you think about the effort then that that road is putting in, they've done a thousand watts for 15 seconds for that sprint. If you look at the effort just before that sprint, they did 800 watts or 700 watts to close the gap to that guy who launched, you know, with 700 meters to go. So they did 700 watts to close that gap and they did it for about 10 seconds. That's by nowhere near their maximum effort because as we saw for 15 seconds at the end, they did a thousand watts. So their maximum power is probably around the 1100 watt range or 1200 watt range, we can estimate. So if you think about it like that, they've gone well below their capacity. When they've jumped across in the last 700 meters, they've jumped across a 7 to 800 watts for 10 seconds. That's hardly burnt anything. It's, it's made a dent, but it's not massive because they, they have so much more to give. Now, in my case, when we do that, when I bridge there at the end, so when I bridge, I'm already sprinting maximal for 10 seconds, just a bridge. So when I get there, I burnt that match. Now I've got to recover at like threshold or you know whatever the other guys are riding at, which is all very well and good for me, as long as we're not going into another sprint. So when you go into another sprint, the other guys, because they've only hit 800, they can now unload the full sprint. And when they unload the full sprint, that's when they do the damage. Whereas I can only do, I can, you know, I can do my 700, 800 watt burst like I did. You saw I, I, sit, I hit 823 or whatever it was to bridge the gap, but then bang, that's my match gone. So when I get across, I then cannot replicate that. And a lot of it is down to, yes, training. And admittedly, I don't do enough of it, but also, you do have to work your strength. And I, for me personally, and it's different for everybody, hence why we have personalized training plans, um, I don't necessarily like to train that. And that's fine, you know? I can keep training my threshold, I can keep training my five minute do to max effort, I can keep training my three minute, my 10 minute, my eight minute, I can keep training all those, I love doing them. You know, my one hour, I love them. When it comes to the maximum efforts, it's a different breed. It's a different breed, you guys know that. You know, you watch Pritch, like you say, you watch Pritch. You know, he was blown yesterday when he did his race, or the day before, and then he still like had like something in him to just go, I'm just gonna do a sprint. He did the sprint, he got like 1500 watts. And that is like, you know, that is like another, that's, that's another type of rider, you know? It is really interesting, it is really interesting, and uh, I'm, I'm by far not like a guru on it, you know, I don't know everything, but um, I, I constantly read stuff, I constantly like, I, ju I just love immersing myself in it, so, um, yeah, it's just the stuff I've read and learned over the years basically, and obviously seeing myself by trial and error and racing against people and things like that, so, yeah.
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I think we're going to be riding with Phil tomorrow morning. We'll see. He wants to do some. Uh, he wants to do the Uber pretzel, which is going to be a huge, uh, huge ride. I think it's like four hours. So, uh, don't know. Let's stream it or not. Be nice for a bit of company, would it? I'll keep my train difficulty there. Uh, Mackenzie, I think it's eight thirty. I think it's um, I think it's an event, but it's just a it's just an e category. It's just a group ride, I think. Okay, I'll stream it. Stream it for some company for four hours. <laughs> um, what can I do to train it? Yeah, I can definitely train it. I can definitely train it. It's not very enjoyable. It's not very enjoyable. <laughs> the um, it works both ways and it swings and runs both. So you have the riders who are, who are, who are genetically gifted in, in a sprint to be fast with fibers and anaerobic work and that sort of thing. And then you have the guys then, like me, slow twitch, very, very good aerobic engine, can go for hours and hours and hours, but also have very good gear to max. The, the problem is that these riders, the, the sprinters, so to speak, they don't have to train that sprint. Even though they enjoy training it and they will train it very often, they don't have to train it as much. And that goes for us. We don't have to train our FTP as much and blah, 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 blah. So ironically, the sprinters don't necessarily like to train <laughs> um, threshold things. So, or they do, but they know that they suffer. So it is a mental game as well. But yeah, it's, um, it's like, and that comes down to the other thing as well, David. So, that if you've been riding at a hard pace for an hour, say if you've just ridden an hour at threshold, so that's basically the maximum you can do for an hour in theory, and then you have one minute rest after that whole hour effort, you have one minute rest, and then bang, you go into a sprint. What are the chances of you hitting a PB in that sprint? Versus what are your chances to doing um, a PB in a sprint after a 15 minute warm up? Um, it's like, it's, it's different for everybody and of course you've seen me doing like this race is like an hour and a half but it's a different kind of effort like we've done four or five minute efforts not all of them maximal obviously but then if you look at me doing like the moon mountain or you know um, any race in the top you really that takes in the epic you know you're doing kind of two by 20 minute, 25 minute climbs um, and they are either just below threshold or at threshold and then when you get to the finish of that after two hours you know that's when you see a difference in the sprint then between you know those that make the front group of 10 you know the sprint is a lot smaller and people can't necessarily attack with a kilometer to go because the resources aren't there you know obviously some people can because the resources are there but for nine times out of ten the resources aren't there so for me and this is the other thing like I try to get across. I think we should be looking more specifically, maybe not so much for 90% of you guys, but specifically for people that want to compete in the real world. I would compete in, um, uh, you know, Zwift races. Uh, maybe they want to do two Zwift races a day. Uh, maybe they want to do one in the morning, one in the evening. Because I often get asked the question like, how do I master race so much? It's often down to the recovery, and it's often down to the fact that I can perform when I'm fatigued often better than when I'm fresh. So what you find is that is from years and years, like eight years of doing, you know, uh, one week races, um, you know, long one day races, that sort of thing. Um, hey, how you doing bud? Nice to see you, good, good finish early and good finish. I'll just explain to some of the guys um, how I found that so hard at the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, where was I? The, um, the fatigue, being able to perform at the end of you know a two hour race or three hour race, so you know hour and a half is still relatively short. I think in 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 most people's eyes, even though you know I hit what was it, um, 100, 110 TSS, you know, that's still a fair, still a fair build up, shall we say, in an hour and a half. So you know it's it's more about like when you get over that 150 TSS mark or sort of thing, you you start to think like riders who can perform 
after a certain amount of energy burned, after, you know, um, after uh, a certain amount of hours ridden, or after, um, you know, a certain amount of 20 minute effort, for example. It's all relative. You can all, you can relate to it in your own way, I think. And um, for me, that's what brings me, I think, my fitness. And I think as well that if we concentrate more sometimes on making ourselves better at fatigued efforts, that actually makes us better at fresh effort. Um, but that's not to say that you should be doing fatigued efforts all the time. You know, that, that's that's the main. That, that's a big. That's a big point. I don't don't feel like you know, I have to do three or four rides with a twenty minute max effort at the end. You know, you know those things aren't um, those things that aren't when those things aren't to be used all the time. You know, they're there in your armory, but you don't use them all the time. So um, you'll see me doing sometimes. You'll see me doing like three Zwift races back to back, or even four. And um, that serves a purpose. You know, that serves a purpose. You can't get any more realistic than doing, you know, two and a half hours of Zwift racing where you've just gone back to back to back and they've all got different efforts in because that really does simulate things that are out of your control. Um, but not very often. <laughs> not very often. Um, There's one more thing that popped into my head, and I can't remember for life me what it is. Three hours thirty-five. Where did you get that from? Is that what you're aiming for, Mackenzie? Or is that what you've done? You mean? Phil, um, Phil, bike racing without mercy. He wants to do all strap. Well, all the KOM. Or the KOM. No, I, well, I don't. I don't want to be getting the KOM. <laughs> um, it will be a race. Uh, it's a good route, apparently. It's a good route. The Uber Pretzel. I've never done it in its entirety, um, but it seems like a good one to do. You know, in a in a, in a big group, not so much race, maybe because it's um, could be a bit boring with all that flat section in the middle. But I think in terms of um, in terms of like riding as a group with some mates, I think it's I think it's quite fun. So tomorrow morning we're gonna be doing that. And then it finishes up out the Zwift, so um, yeah. What better place to finish a ride? <laughs> yeah it's an invite only Johnny. It's an invite only Uh, but, but that one, that one is something different. Um, that one is like, that one is just for World Tour teams. As in, like, do you know what's been happening recently with Ruby and um, you know some of the other platforms? They've been doing, they've been doing like, uh, you know, real races then, like with, with the pro. With, Pro Pro Riders, World Tour Riders, I don't know what, what the heck we call them, like Pro Pro Riders. Um, but yeah, um, they're just, it's just a race for them basically to just get a lot of money, probably. Um, but what better way, in my opinion, like what better way like, than to open that up? The problem is, I think what happens is you expose the World Tour Riders. So if you open it up to like, um, yeah, all of it will probably get to race, yeah. So it will be worth watching just to cheer on all of it. <laughs> um, I think it will expose some riders, you know, if you have Zwift elite riders in it, or even the likes of me in it. Uh, true, lot, true. Um, there's, there's a race on tonight, guys. Uh, I don't want to, like, advertise for other people that aren't in our little circle. But there is a race on um, tonight for, uh, what is it? It's the, I can't remember what it's called though. What should we call this? Oosh. 
Dog Town. Just. <laughs> um, yeah, there is a race on tonight on Zwift Community Live. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, pro -am. And it's Keith Hill after party. Or is it Leith Hill? Keith. You should know. I think it's Keith Hill. Yeah, Yana Pro Am Invitational. So that's another Invitational race. Love them at the minute, don't they? They love these Invitational races. I can't race it, Johnny. We're not invited. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Sorry, bud. I feel like I'm ruining your uh, schedule. Like you want to watch this race, the big races, and I'm just letting you down all the time. I really don't know, um, Johnny. Yeah, it is, Len. It is. Yes, Lord. I am back to 60k. Well, when I say 60k, you can't, um, you can't do decimals, can you? You can't do like, um, you can't do like. 50.7, so uh, I just put it to 60, rounded it. But um, I've got to be honest, like, it makes no difference between 59 and 60 when uh, when I race. Like I don't see any difference at all. It's like 0.2, 0 0.3 of a watt per kilo or something. It's like it's hardly worth um, it's hardly worth mucking around about. I know people get a bit in all about it, but the, th the thing is, Lord, this is interesting. But the thing is. A lot of it's walked away. So what happens is if I if I jump on a scale this morning on 60 kilo, 60 kilos of tomorrow I jump on 61. It takes about three days for me to get down 50 just below 60, like 50, 59.7 or something. And it's mainly because of water weight, you know. So I'm, a little bit of ma manipulation goes a long way. So if you don't eat too late in the evening, um, you'll actually wake up a lot lighter because you've gone longer without food. Um, it's amazing as well, actually. Like, you know, if you if you really wanted to, you could you could sweat out a lot of weight. You know, you could sweat out a lot. If if you had a race late in the evening and you jumped on a bike early in the morning, you weigh yourself after two hours of drifting with like one bottle. Um, that can be you can lose like a kilo in sweat. You know, and then you've got the whole day to, in theory, you know, drink, fuel up, carb, everything. You know, and you're not really doing any damage because, if anything, it's like heat training. You know, and people say heat training brings benefits. So, you know, as long as you're not pushing like extreme heart rate and, and all the rest of it, you know, it's, it's pretty nuts. Like it's people talking about putting like towels under your scales and like manipulating the scale. You don't even have to do that. Like just go and sit in the sauna for like ride your bike indoors for an hour, don't drink anything, you know, moderate intensity and you weigh a kilo less. Like. But it's not the problem. The problem is not weighing a kilo less, the problem is weighing four kilos less. And that's the problem people are having. Whereas like with someone like me, well I can only lose a kilo anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be invited soon, Keith. I'm it might be it might be the cam thing, it might be the Tron thing, but um Oh well, is that right Keith? If I go to pounds so I could put in like 133 pounds or whatever and it'll come up as like 59.2, is that right? Well, it doesn't it won't come up as 59.2, but you know what I mean. It'll come up as because I've wondered, I've seen them on Zwift Power, maybe you guys can enlighten me on this. I've seen them on Zwift Power where some of the guys are like 74.3 and I'm like, how have they got the point in there? Yeah, yeah, I get that, I get that Keith, yeah. Yeah, I saw the new rules and regs, yeah. I saw it yesterday, it's um, like some stuff in there like, you know, the 5% gradient thing, like, uh, where are you gonna do? Who does a sprint on 5% gradient? Well, don't answer that. 
I mean, like, where are we going to get a 20 minute play that's like 5%? Well, to be fair, I don't answer that because I've actually got the ability to do it, but <laughs> a lot of people don't. Yeah, that's right, Keith. That's right. But but in the rules, it says within 24 hours. So if you're racing that night, you can weigh yourself any time. You can weigh yourself any time. You know, you could weigh yourself that morning. You could weigh yourself 10 minutes before you get on the bike in the evening. So you could, you know. Is that right, John? So I've got my Zwift power and then change the settings on there. Okay. I'll have a go. I'll have a go. But yeah, it was a bit strange seeing the um, it was a bit strange seeing that the new esports rules. What I find as well, it's probably just me being like being all about it, but. It like gets my goat a little bit that people have to weigh themselves in in like full kit and socks. Now this would be this would be okay, but like if you think about it, this jersey, this jersey weighs nothing. This, there could be some poor soul who's like a very very good bike rider and he's on and he's in the invitational race and he's like he's got like some cheapy crack kit and it weighs like 100 grams more so he could be weighing himself and each piece of kit weighs 100 grams more and like he's 200 grams heavier there's like these little things in the rules that I'm like well why like, why don't we just all wear pants? Like, just wear pants. Don't wear kit, because that's not your body weight. It's not your body weight. So like, why would you enter a weight in Zwift that's not your body weight? Now, you might as well jump on there with your, with your cycling shoes on. You know what I'm saying? Like, why jump on? If we're, if we're, not, if we're gonna weigh ourselves with kit, why not weigh with our heart rate monitors on and our shoes on? Like. Where's the sense? Yeah, well, exactly, Rich. And then some people will be taking out their insoles because the insoles will weigh like 60 grams each. Listen, you're talking to a hill climber here, yeah? so every gram matters. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you think about it, like, how, how can it work? Like, you've got to record yourself getting on the scale, you've got to wait to be full. So, the weight to be phone is like 200 grams. I've seen some people like put their phone like on like a table and then they have like their weighing scale there in front of the table so they can have their phone there so they can see the weighing scale and the number as they stand on. Some people don't want to hold their phone because it weighs too much so they put it there. But then it says in the rules that you have to have your weighing scale in the middle of the floor so you can't hold on to anything. But then that means you have to hold your phone. Or yes, somebody else could hold your phone, but like, it's got to be practical, and there has to be. I'm going to throw this other turn now, and you're not going to like it. But there has to be a certain amount of trust. There has to be a certain amount of trust. As human beings, we create so many rules around things now because we can't trust another human being. 
And I find that like, incredibly disappointing. Um, and it might just be me, but I'm sure some of you guys feel the same. Um, I just think that we have to think about like how to make it work long term. And if we're going to constantly change the rules, then that's not good. You know, we need to let's just think about the rules, brainstorm it for a long period of time, and then you know make it as uh, as transparent as possible. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, you're right, Lang. I mean, I. Yeah, exactly also. <laughs> exactly. But like, I, you know, if you're racing with somebody and they say, oh, how much are you weighing in a minute? I'm like, ah, oh, well, 61 and a half kilos when I'm going to kick down. I'm actually 60 kilos. And they're like, all right, so you weigh 60 kilos then. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, why tell people how much you weigh when you're in full kick? saying a lot to be fair the Zwift power and weight height doping on Zwift shows that some verification might be necessary. Oh yeah. Some very verification no, I like that, I like that. I mean yeah some verification must be necessary but I mean like I read it yesterday, I gotta be honest, I read it yesterday and it just made me feel very like it, it made me feel very um, vulnerable. It made me feel very vulnerable reading those rules, you know. I know who I am and I know my performance and I know myself and I know that there's people out there that, that will do things for those for those gold medals and things like that. Um, but I feel I feel like let down in a way that you know it's come to that. You know, it's come to this. The the, the rules are that deep and that not strict, but so kind of like mind numbing, you know, you read it and you're like, I gotta do all, well, not, not so much I gotta do all this because that sounds like, you know, everybody should do it. Um, you know, and I, it's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Um, I'm, I feel like I sent it to somebody yesterday who is a good friend, lives back at home and he thought I was he thought the rules were a joke he thought it was it was like a, a, a joke as in it's like are these genuinely like the rules um, he, he doesn't ride Zwift by the way he follows it he watches it um, on the odd occasion uh, I tell him about my Zwift races and stuff we usually go for a ride most most days of the week together um, so he's one of my closest friends and um, He's 45, getting on to 50. And I was just saying, like, you know, he, could, he couldn't understand like how, how it had come to that. Um, but it, it does it does make you think like, like you, you have to do a lot of um, you have to do a lot of work to make yourself look legit. You know, and I use that word loosely, but you do. You have to. You have to do a lot of work, a lot of groundwork, and a lot of people will. You know, well, for me, I'll suck it up and I'll do it. But it does make me feel a little bit sad that you know it, it does have to come to that when, when especially for someone like myself, um, you know, 
for someone like myself who's, you know, I'm not a world beater, I'm not the best in the world by any stretch, and I'm here to enjoy my cycling as much as the next person. But it's hard to explain, but like, you know, I've done so much in the last kind of 10 years, and you know, everything, everything, literally almost everything from 2013 is on Strava. Um, which is quite interesting to see how power has changed over the years. Uh, everything's on Training Peaks. Um, the last three or four years is on YouTube. Uh, almost every Zwift race is live streamed. I show you literally the dirt of my life on video. Like none of it is like whitewashed or you know none of it is kind of made to look like something it's not because that doesn't turn me on um, it's bizarre isn't it well this is, this is getting a bit deep now for a Saturday morning but um, I appreciate you sticking around <laughs> I'm going to get Charlie now Charlie's gone and hidden upstairs, so. Oh, somebody sent me an Instagram message asking uh, what the strap is around my arm. Hey, lots of people don't know what that is. Yeah, true, true, Len. Oh, I nice one, Phil. Yeah, I do. I do mainly use the races as part of my training, but um, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. So I do enjoy mixing it, and you know, I do take it somewhat seriously. You know, I because part of what I do and it's part of how I enjoy it. Some days I take it more seriously than others, granted. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, um, I think we, our fastest time was like five minutes or something. I know we did five and a half the first time up. Five and a half, I think, 5.37. But I think we were mostly doing about five, 5.5 to 6 watts per kilo apart from the last one. Yeah, it's a good hill, Andrew. I've ridden it. I don't know if you saw, I rode it um, like in November, I think. Um, or December. It was a good one. It's a good one. I liked it. Um, it's uh, lots of varying terrain on it. I know it's steep at the top, but it does start off fairly flat, but it, well, fairly flat, and not as steep as the top. But um, if it's on, I'll, I'd be excited to, to give it a crack. Like, why not? Um, it's good support, really, and uh, it's great to, to like have the amount of support that the National Hill Climb gets, so I always enjoy that. I would always enjoy it. Yeah, thank you, Q. Thank you very much. Nice one, Phil. Uh, I catch you in the morning then, yeah? Bright and early. What are we saying? 8.30 start. the event now. Yeah, they do all slow. Well, technically it's called Zwift Power. I'm just having a look. Oh, I've got a spot. I've got a spot. 
Oh, I'm going to see. Something like that. Eat so deep. On it. Come on it. Eight thirty AM. There we go. I can see two of you have already signed up. Who's the two? Gus and Phil. Yeah. Excellent. Is that 128k? Who's in 29? My bad, Quentin. I'm gonna search you now, and uh, I'm gonna scroll down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Your name's not on yet. Your name's not on that kid. Excellent wave of birds. I'll just I'll go on gas and then I'll go following and then I'll look for you on that. Make more. Oh, he's right. oh, there you are. Just answer the queue. <laughs> Done. Looks like he's riding as well. They're on. Oh, right. An escalator? What do you mean? There's a charity donation to make. If I go sub four hours, I'll be adding an escalator to my contribution. Let's get to the sub four hours, I feel. Right, boys, I'm gonna love you and leave you now. It's nearly midday, so lunchtime in the uh, in the student household. Well, I might easily do sub four, but I want Phil to do sub four. Yeah, so it's about piercing. Yeah, we don't want to blow blow big style up the out, do we? That would not be cool. You know. Besides, you might be on for a Phil, you might be on for a PD at the Alps Mark. <laughs> after four hours. After three and a half hours. I know I was told the record is three thirty five, but um, we'll see what kind of state we're in when we get to the bottom of the Alps. We'll see what kind of state we're in. <laughs> it's all for a good cause. Alright, guys. Uh, appreciate you watching, appreciate you chatting. Um, it's been good and bad. <laughs> no, I'm not serious. I'll uh, catch you tomorrow morning. Have a good day.